बैठ जाए बैठ जाए Assalamu alaikum so today is going to be another very intense lecture so you have to be careful uh, and attentive at every point but the first requirement is to be quiet so we've already seen the other day that radiation behaves like waves and each wave has a mathematical representation for example this wave is represented in space and time by a complex number e i k x minus omega t and by looking at the real part of this number one can find out what the physical wave is so this is a mathematical description of a wave and it does not harm me if i add an arbitrary phase here so if this phase is zero the real part will be a cosine function and if this phase is 90 degrees the real part will be a sine function so i can arbitrarily choose what this phase is the phase tells you what the amplitude is when x is zero and time is equal to zero so this is a general expression of a wave and a special kind of wave which is called a plane wave a plane wave starts at minus infinity and goes to minus infinity in space and as well as in time it has started from the big bang and will continue till the big crunch so it goes from eternity to eternity so it's a special kind of idealized wave now what i would like you to consider is the fact suppose we have two waves all right by looking at this mathematical expression can you tell me what the wave number is what's the wave number of this wave k what's the wavelength it's 2 pi over k so this is the period in wavelength is the period in the spatial domain and the time period is the period in the time domain and omega is related inversely to the time period so this is related to the period in the time domain and this is related to the period in the spatial domain now what we would like to explore is okay by looking at this wave can you tell me what the velocity of this wave is लास्ट रो में बताएं लास्ट रो में जो बैठे हुए व्हाट्स द वेलोसिटी ऑफ दिस वेव एनी वन इट्स ओमेगा ओवर के आई थिंक द क्लास स्टार्ट एट टेन ए एम So the velocity of this wave v is omega over k and you can find out what the velocity is just by looking at the mathematical expression let me continue please Now suppose I have one wave 
y1 given by a e i k1 x minus omega 1 t k1 is its wave number and omega 1 is its frequency this k1 is also called the spatial frequency this is the frequency in the time domain now this is one wave now can waves add or subtract yes they can this is called interference waves can add or subtract suppose I have another wave and this wave is given by the expression the same amplitude a e i k 2 x minus omega 2 t now k 2 is slightly different from k 1 and omega 2 is slightly different from omega 1 now what's the what's the horizontal axis in these pictures that I've drawn it could be distance it could be time since I'm a finite human being and so hopefully are all of you I cannot draw x and time x and time in one go so either I plot versus distance or I plot versus time <laughs> so I can draw either spatial portraits or time portraits now I'm standing at a fixed position in space and I'm seeing these two waves coming at me now my resultant wave motion will be the superposition of these waves now what I would like to do I would like to add these amplitudes all right so in order to add the waves I will just take y1 plus y2 I'm simply adding the waves the amplitudes and the result would be a e i k1 x minus omega 1 t plus a e i k2 x minus omega 2 t now I have taken the complex numbers and I've added two complex numbers so what I would like to do now is add these numbers this is one wave and this is the other wave now is there an easy way of adding these numbers G all right so if you find adding trigonometric functions easier let's uh, than exponential functions as this student has pointed out we can also not use complex numbers we can use complex numbers or we cannot use complex numbers it doesn't matter so what do you prefer do you want to use complex numbers for the addition or not <coughs> all right so you don't want to use complex numbers so let's suppose this wave is given by sine of k1 x minus omega 1 t you comfortable with this this wave is given by sine k2 x minus omega 2 t comfortable with this fine but this expression will yield the same results so I will probably give this in a quiz or in a homework but for purposes of illustration I would like to stick to what I've written in yellow. So y is given by a sine of k1 x minus omega 1 t plus a sine of k2 x minus omega 2 t. Now please can you simplify this expression somehow? Please do so.
दोनों एंगल्स तो डिफरेंट नहीं तो क्या वो ऐड तो कर सकते हैं ना सर अगर एक साइन थीटा कुछ और है एक साइन थीटा कुछ हम्म तो दो नंबर्स को ऐड नहीं कर सकते कर सकते हैं ऐड ना ये देखो इसका थीटा एंगल इसका थीटा टू है दोनों ऐड तो हो सकते हैं तो आगे नहीं कुछ हो सकता शाबाश साइन कॉस बनाना चाह रहा हूँ यू कैन इधर यूज द रियल और दी पार्ट डजेंट मैटर सो दिस इज सिंपल ट्रिक्नोमेट्री आई डो नॉट वॉन्ट टू स्पेंड मोर टाइम ऑन दिस बट दिस इज समथिंग यू शुड बी एबल टू डू ऑन योर ओन sign of the sum of these arguments divided by 2 k1 plus k2 x minus omega 1 plus omega 2 t over 2 and cosine of the difference of these arguments divided by 2 This is something that I expect all SSC students in their freshman year to know and to be able to do on their own. So now what we have here, k1 plus k2 divided by 2. This is an average wave number, and this is an average frequency. Correct? Omega 1 plus omega 2 divided by 2 is an average frequency. Agreed? so i can write this as 2a sin of some k average x minus omega average t multiplied by cosine of now k1 minus k2 is the difference in the wave numbers bit of of the component waves okay and omega 1 minus omega 2 is the difference in their frequencies so k1 minus k2 is i write this as delta k divided by 2 x minus delta omega divided by 2 into time so this is my resultant wave all right so now the million dollar question this k average how do you compare the value of this number with the k's of the component waves is it of comparable magnitude is it much larger is it much smaller it's comparable it's in the middle it's because it's the average likewise 
omega average is the average so it has to be comparable with the frequencies of the component waves now what about this number delta k it's going to be a very small number because k1 and k2 are comparable they are similar so the difference between two similar numbers is small likewise delta omega is going to be a small number so what I would like you to do is plot a spatial portrait of this wave that is I would like you to plot this wave such that the resultant y is on the vertical axis and on the x axis I have x and I plot it at some time t I would like you to plot this wave now ये देखो जो मैं आपसे काम करवा रहा हूँ बिल्कुल मुश्किल नहीं है बिल्कुल सिंपल ट्रिग्नोमेट्री है और आसान करके मैं आपको पढ़ा रहा हूँ इसको बड़े मुश्किल अंदाज में भी पढ़ाया जा सकता है लेकिन दिस इज द सिंपलेस्ट अप्रोच डेट आई कैन थिंक ऑफ ऑफ अ वेरी डीप कॉन्सेप्ट I would like you to like you to think in the following way this function is a product of this function and this function right so this function goes between plus minus 1 it's a cosine function this also goes between plus minus 1 so first plot this separately and this separately and then multiply the two functions जो मैंने पूछा पहले वो करो जो प्लॉट करके देखो क्या किसी एक टाइम पर प्लॉट कर लेकिन चेंज तो हो रहा है ना X तो स्मॉल नहीं है ना Besides one student, is anyone confident enough to show me a solution? You 
see even if you are not physics students you just science students you should be able to do this something like this which is maximum like 45 for sign and cos would be think globally this is just a sine wave If I tell you a word that you've read in your A-level books and you remember a formula, you'll be able to immediately plot the wave. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I look at this function. This is a fast function because k is large, omega is large. So since I'm working at fixed time, my k is large, which means the spatial frequency is large. The wavelength is small. Right? Large k average means small wavelength. Large k average as compared to this. So in physics, when you say small or large, it's the next question you should ask is with respect to what? There's no such thing as small or large. You ask with respect to what? This number is large with respect to this. So this is a rapidly varying function in space as well as in time. So if I would like to plot this, it's a sine function. And so on. With a particular wavelength, which is 2 pi over k average. Now, I would like to plot this function. This is also a sinusoidal or a cosinusoidal function. Sine and cosine are not really different. They just differ by 90 degrees in phase. So this is a cosine function, but it has a small spatial frequency, which means a larger wavelength, a longer wavelength, as compared to this function. So if I would like to plot this separately, I would plot something like this. Right? This is my slowly varying function and this is my rapidly varying function. Now I have to do a point by point multiplication. Can you now perform this multiplication and tell me what the result will look like? Up multiply karke batao kis tarah ka solution aega? यार इतनी लोकल डिटेल साइन यहाँ से शुरू हो रहा है कोस साइन यहाँ से हो रहा है गिव मी दी ओवरऑल पैटर्न अब करो I mentioned three things words pictures and equations we're talking about pictures here forget about the amplitude you're going into too many details but basic to talk don't understand what's going on Shabash. 
something like this should be used. Chabash. Good. So the result will look something like this. So this is a modulation function. This is this is acting like a knob, which is controlling the amplitude of this white <laughs> function. Here, it is letting it's being mul it's multiplying the sine function with one. Here, it's multiplying the sine function with zero. So you get zero here. Here, it's multiplying the sine function with minus one. So you so it reverses the direction of the sine function. So at the end, what you observe is this pattern. And if I would like to draw this pattern in another way, this pattern looks like this. So at any particular point in time, the sinusoidal function, the fast varying function is being modulated by a yellow function which is also called an envelope for obvious reasons. This yellow function is enveloping the fast varying function. So this is what you finally observe. And can you please tell me, does it ring a bell with something you've already studied? What? Beats. This is something that is called beats or this white function is being amplitude modulated. Its amplitude is switching sinusoidally between plus one and minus one. And this yellow envelope function is a slowly varying function. And it's changing the amplitude of the fast varying function. Now if you look at this white function, can you tell me what the velocity of the white function is? If you take any point here, take any point here, P, on side the white function with what velocity will this white will this point move in the forward direction what will be the velocity at the of the point p bataiye It's going to be आपने पहले मुझे बताई थी velocity velocity ये बताई थी ना इस वाले function को देख के आपने omega divided by k लिख करके velocity बताई थी इस wave की तो इस point पे p point इसने forward move करना है it's a traveling wave p has to advance forward so what will be the velocity of this point p which omega? There, there is no omega here. Yahan pe aapko koi omega nazar aara likha wa. It's going to be omega average divided by k average. This is called the phase velocity, Vp. But in this resultant wave, you have a fast moving wave that is the white wave envelope in a slow varying function. And this slow varying function also moves forward. So if you look at this blue envelope and you take a point on the blue envelope, say a point Q, this point is also going to move forward with a certain velocity. Can you tell me what the velocity of this envelope will be? Right. So the velocity of point Q on the envelope
is going to be delta omega over delta k and this is called the group velocity vg so what we really have here is an envelope Inside this envelope, there are fast moving waves. And this envelope as a whole is advancing forward. with a certain velocity so in time tau in time tau what's this distance going to be it's going to be vg tau right so the envelope is moving forward and the white fast varying functions they are also moving with the, with their particular phase velocity all right now one thing i would like to ask you can you tell me what the width of this envelope is going to be? What's the width of an envelope? Two pi over? Two pi over delta k or pi over delta k? Pi over delta k. It's going to be pi over delta k. So this delta x, which is the width of the envelope, is going to be 2 pi or pi over delta k. Agreed? Because you look at this function, co this cosine function, and see where the value of this cosine function goes to zero. Ignore this for the time being because we are frozen in time. It's going to be zero at 90 degrees and then at 270 degrees when this function is 270 degrees. So when this separation is pi, which means Delta K over 2 x2 minus delta K over 2 x1 is pi. Okay, this means delta K over 2 x2 minus x1 is pi. This means delta x is 2 pi over delta k. So there is a 2 here. Aap chayad is factor ko bhool ge the. Okay? Are you with me on this point? No? Where are you lost from? You lost from here? <coughs> now this is your function. Let's plot this function. I have said that I have been told that I have been told that this function, which is the envelope function, this is cosine 
डेल्टा के ओवर टू एक्स माइनस डेल्टा ओमेगा ओवर टू टी एट टाइम टी इक्वल टू जीरो बिकॉज वी कैन चूज एनी टाइम वी लाइक दिस इज को साइन डेल्टा के एक्स ओवर टू नाउ इफ आई प्लॉट दिस फंक्शन If I plot this one, let's see. If I plot this function, it looks like this. Okay, and so on. I would like to find this distance. This is the envelope, right? This is the distance between the two successive minima in the envelope. जी या ये भी मिनिमम है ये भी मिनिमम है ना एनवेलोप का यार टू सक्सेसिव मिनिमा तो ये है ना जहां पे वो जीरो क्रॉस कर रहा है पीरियड की मैं बात नहीं कर रहा मैं वेट्स ऑफ द एनवेलोप की बात कर रहा हूं एनवेलोप इस तरह बन रही है राइट एनवेलोप ऐसे बनेगी सो आई वुड लाइक टू फाइंड दिस डिस्टेंस which is the difference between two successive minima that will be the width of the envelope now this function is zero when this thing is 90 degrees and when this thing is 270 degrees that is when this difference in this argument is by 180 degrees or pi so i would like if i would like to find this distance which is which i call delta x I would just use the prescription here. Delta k over two x two. This point is x two minus delta k over two x one. This point is x one, and the difference between the arguments or the angles between these points is given by pi. So I work out the algebra. It turns out delta x equals two pi over delta k. Is it now clear? Now, if I rearrange this equation a little bit, I get delta x delta k equals two pi. Now, this is a very important relationship. with which we will learn a lot of quantum mechanics remember so far we haven't talked touched quantum mechanics in its full glory we've seen that matter has a particulate nature and now we're looking at waves waves have been known since the time of greeks waves have nothing to do with quantum mechanics per se so we're looking at a purely non quantum phenomenon a purely classical phenomenon and what we observe is that the width of the envelope multiplied by the difference in the wave numbers is given by 2 pi now can i increase delta x if i increase delta x if i want to increase delta x delta k has to go down which means the component waves must have similar wave numbers if my component waves have different very dissimilar wave numbers then the width of the envelope will shrink so i am at the liberty of making an envelope like this which holds within it a fast varying function versus a function that goes like this a fast varying envelope
Now what's the difference between these two waves? Both of them are made up of two component waves. This has a shrunken envelope width. It's a tighter envelope. The same white function in both of them. However, this has a smaller envelope which means that the waves that compose this resultant wave have very different wave numbers. So the role of X and K is like a seesaw. If X goes down, delta X goes down, delta K goes up. If delta X goes up, delta K goes down. So they are conjugate variables. Position X and the spatial frequency, they are conjugate numbers. If one increases, the other has to go down. If this decreases, the other has to go up. And I'm giving you an idea of the uncertainty principle. If one goes down, the other goes up. Now we've dealt with X and K, but we could have also made portraits in time. Look at the top graphs. We've, we've made spatial portraits. That is, time is frozen. But we could also have frozen ourselves in space. That is, we are standing at a particular point in space and letting the waves pass through. So we have two component waves reaching us and we see what the resultant wave is as a function of time. Okay, we can do that as well. So we can do time portraits. That is, we take, we click the camera again and again, again and again, but we are focused on one point. The images that I've drawn here, they, you, they take a far view from far view shot from and they just take one image of the wave and they see how the wave is progressing in space I can do the converse I can zoom in at a particular point in space and take successive images again and again again and again again and again in that case what will happen is this axis will be replaced by the time axis this axis will be replaced by the time axis okay and I will write at some X if I perform the same procedure for time and frequency what relationship will I get please raise your hands here I proceed I have done the mathematics of position and spatial frequency if I were to move in the time domain and I would look at these time portraits, what will be the relationship that I will obtain? Please raise your hands. Yellow kameez, aap jo piche dekhne aap to. Shabash. We will obtain delta omega, delta t, equals 2 pi performed exactly the same procedure no difference this shows that omega and time frequency and time they are conjugate variables if I increase delta omega delta t has to go down which means the envelope will become sharper in time. If I decrease delta omega, delta t will go up, which means that the envelope will become more spread out in time. So there is a constant battle going on between conjugate variables, between x and k, between omega and t. And this has nothing to do with quantum mechanics per se. This is a purely wave phenomenon. Alright, so <clears throat> let's build this analogy a little bit further. But let me first mention this word for the very first time in this course, Heisenberg's uncertainty.
what Heisenberg's uncertainty means is that whenever you have waves then this relationship holds delta x delta k has to be greater than or equal to some number let's call it a some number likewise delta t delta omega has to be greater than or equal to some number a they cannot be zero this cannot be equal to zero there's a trade off one goes up the other goes down So the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is a purely wave phenomenon and we will see the full glory and majesty of this principle when we look at matter waves that ma even matter can behave like waves. I'm sure you've heard the name tsunami. <laughs> now, this word tsunami I think it's a Japanese word. Yes. In modern day Pakistan, you know it has multiple meanings. <laughs> but tsunami is really a giant ocean wave. It's a giant ocean wave. And it's different from other waves, traveling waves that we've seen in the following way that it's just one large wave crest of water on the ocean and it's moving forward in time. It's moving forward with a certain speed. Let's call it VG, the group velocity. This is a tsunami. So this is moving on the surface of the ocean. A giant crest. But it does not have smaller waves associated with it. It's just one big pulse. Alright, so I'm using this word pulse for the first time. It's a pulse that is moving forward. With a certain group velocity. This is also a wave. Okay? This is also a wave. Now earthquakes, they are formed by seismic waves. We have a seismometer in our laboratory. So what the seismometer measures is are the vibrations that are received from waves traveling from the epicenter of the earthquake. So a seismic wave looks something like this. And then it diminishes. So it's a wave packet. It's an envelope that is zero everywhere. But it's non-zero only in a certain region. And this wave packet is moving forward with a certain group velocity. There could be other kinds of waves as well. You see, this is a wave. This is a wave. This is also a wave. But this wave was composed by adding two waves. You can get these resultant waves as well by adding a larger number of component waves. Okay? So what is happening is, why is this wave zero here? Because the component waves are adding in such a way that they destructively interfere. Here, the component waves are adding in such a way that they constructively interfere. So the two component waves are constantly, constructively and destructively interfering. At certain points you get these nodes and at certain points you get the maximum amplitude. Likewise, we can consider a scenario where the waves, the component waves add up such that they constructively interfere only in a certain region and destructively interfere everywhere else. So we can build our example even further. We can take What we can do is we can take a wave A1 E I K1 X minus omega 1 T. We 
we can take another wave with a different amplitude A to E I different wave number different frequency we can take yet another wave A3 EI K3X minus omega 2T we can take yet another wave AN EI KNX minus omega NT and then we can add up all of these waves and we can take a large number of waves so instead of working with two component waves we can work with a large number of component waves each with different amplitudes and each with different values of the wave numbers different wavelengths different frequencies and then even though the mathematics gets very complicated and there are simpler ways to do the maths as well all of these waves will add up and they will give you a resultant wave and that resultant wave can have any shape your little heart desires <laughs> really it can be a wave like this it can be a sawtooth wave it can be a square wave it can be a pulse which is zero everywhere and it's non zero only within a certain width delta x and it's moving forward with a certain velocity vg you can have a tsunami you just have to adjust the coefficients a1 a2 a3 and an and there are formulas for doing this in fact one of napoleon bonaparte's most favorite persons was fourier jean baptiste fourier in fact fourier worked out how do you calculate these coefficients if you would like if your little heart desires i would like a wave like this i wish a wave like this fourier can tell you what the values of these coefficients are going to be so by adding waves in this fashion we can construct any wave that we desire any envelope that we desire and the key is that if you have an envelope like this if you would like a tighter envelope this to be small if you would like